In the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're taking a look at how we can leverage SEM Rush to find quick win keywords for our SEO strategies. <laughs> Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If it's your first time watching or maybe you've been watching a while and you have not yet hit subscribe, please do so now. We create new content each week to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be using one of our favorite SEO tools, SEMrush, and we're going to show you how you can use this tool in order to find quick wins for your SEO strategy. Now, a lot of people ask, how do I find keywords for quick wins? A lot of times when we go into an SEO project, or we, we start a new campaign, you know, people have these very, very broad terms they wanna go after, they have a ton of traffic and a ton of competition, and that's great, but in the meantime, we also need to see the needle move. We need to see traffic grow. In order to do that, we need to look at oftentimes a lot more of these long tail terms and other opportunities within the search results to expand our ability to grow traffic in meaningful traffic for the businesses that we're working for or for our own business. So we asked this question, how do I find these types of keywords? Now, this is the criteria we're gonna look at for quick wins. We're gonna look at intent. We're gonna look at a position. So where do we actually rank? Uh, we're gonna look at the volume of those terms. And we're gonna look at the number of cert features that are available because SEO today is not just about ranking with those blue links, right? We've got SERP features, we've got rich features, we've got a lot of different opportunities in the landscape or the real estate available for us with any search result is vastly different than it used to be even just a few years ago. And lastly, we wanna look at keyword difficulty. Obviously, we wanna to try to find these terms that have good volume, but also low difficulty so that we have a higher chance of earning or winning that specific query. All right, so let's pop over to SEMrush and we'll look at actually how we can put all of this together. If you don't have SEM Rush and you wanna follow along with this, we can get you a 14 day full free trial, which means that you can do anything you possibly want with the tool using this link below. It's semrush.com forward slash partner forward slash SMA marketing. So if you wanna go and follow along with us, go to this link right now. It's also linked below. That way you're able to do exactly what we're doing in order to find some of those quick wins. All right, let's head over to SEMrush. All right, so we are logged in to SEMrush and right now we're sitting on our SEO dashboard home uh, for our agency's website. So we're inside of SEMrush. When we want to look at quick wins, there's a few things that we wanna look for. Now, in order to see a difference in traffic, we need to move terms higher in the search results. If we look at you know, the click-through rate for different ranking positions, we can see whether or not we could actually earn traffic. Now, SEM Rush does do a little bit of that for us with like the projected traffic estimator within the keyword research, and I'll show you where that's at here in just a minute. Um, but you can see, and it's just kind of known, the higher you rank, right? Theoretically, the more traffic you're going to get. So if we move a keyword from position 68 to position 30, it doesn't really matter because there's no traffic change. Now the client may be happy, but at the end of the day, the client wants to see their traffic go up. And so if we're just moving into page three, it, we're really not getting them the results they wanna see. Now that might be the case with these broad terms, but when it comes to quick wins and starting to show that SEO does actually work, we need to look at terms that are in the top 20, terms that are in the top 10, and terms that are in the top three. So what you wanna do is kind of bucket these different groups, right? So we've got terms that are ranking two and three. So we don't earn the first position for, and we wanna to try to get that. So these are these are terms that are ranking two and three. The next group we have are terms that are ranking four to 10. The reason why those top three positions get a majority of the traffic, it's gonna be a little bit more competitive there, so we may have to do a lot of bit more strategic optimization. Those terms four to 10, let's say if we move a position um, eight to a position four, there's gonna be a significant change in the amount of traffic you would get for that term. If that term has got a lot of volume, you're gonna notice that pretty quickly. And then we've got terms that aren't in the top 10, so you're probably not getting any traffic for them, but with a little bit of effort, you may be able to bump those terms maybe from 15 to 10 or from 12 to seven. Now you're gonna start seeing traffic for those terms. So that's what quick win strategy is all about. So in order to do this, we wanna use the domain overview tool. So we'll go ahead and type in our domain and hit enter. 
This is gonna give you a quick overview of your domain as a whole. The amount of traffic they're estimating for you, the amount of keywords your site ranks for, uh, and a whole lot more. As you can see here, SERP features and all that fun stuff. Now, what we wanna do, let's say we want to target terms where we're ranking positions four through 10, and we wanna see can we improve that group of terms and what's the possibility for us to grow in that specific area. What we would then do after we've run this quick domain overview is go over here to organic research. Now organic research is going to show you all the terms that your site is supposedly ranking for. Now it may not have all of them because this is just a tool but it's got quite a bit of them. So right here it's telling me I've got uh, about 6.5k or 6,500 terms that we rank for. Now from the organic trend, I can start to narrow this down and I can see a graph of only the terms which are in four to 10. And I've actually got 252 terms that we rank in positions four through 10 on. Now, if I want to go and see what those terms are, I just click this positions tab. And again, I can filter this for terms that are ranking position four through 10. And here we go. We have that entire list. And remember we talked about our criteria. We wanna see things like intent, right? We wanna see the search features. Uh, this is the estimated traffic that they think we're getting from this term, the amount of volume that specific term has, and how difficult this term is to rank, as well as what is the URL that we're currently ranking for this term. So SEMrush is gonna give us a lot of data. There's a, a 252 terms here. What I like to do is then take this data out of here and put it into a Google Sheet and start to do some organizing. So that's what we're going to do next. Go ahead and hit export, and you can go ahead and add as, a, as an Excel file, and then head over to sheets.google.com. You can start a new sheet. There's a few ways to do this. You can copy and paste this data over, or you can just use the import function here, upload the file we just downloaded, and tell it to replace the sheet, and here's all that fun, cool information. So now we've got our keywords, we've got the positions that they're ranking in, we've got all that other fun data. Now I'm gonna to try to make this a little bit more legible for us. There we go. And we can zoom in, that way everybody can see. At this point, I'm not super worried about where we rank position-wise. Um, I do want to look at it long term, like we have been in position three for this, that's okay. Uh, the really, the ones that I care about the most right now are intent, search volume, keyword difficulty, and then the search features or the SERP features. So what we can do right now, just to make this easier to work with, is we'll go ahead and hide all these columns that we're not going to be working with right this second. Like I need the URL, I just don't need it right now. So the first thing I, I want to do is start to filter and sort this data. Now, I want to look at keyword intent because this is going to tell me what type of content I'm typically working with. Now, in most cases, informational content is going to be a blog content. Informational content is a little bit more um, relaxed. It's not in most cases, right? It's, it's where people are going to learn, they're going to investigate, it's that top of funnel content, and it tends to be on blogs, which tend to be a lot easier to optimize, change, and tweak because it's not a main site page, right? You're not having to rewrite commercial copy, you're looking at blog content. Typically top of the funnel content where you have a little bit more leeway to play around. So the first thing I like to do is go ahead and just clear this, and let's just focus solely on informational queries. Now, we've already taken this large list down quite a bit just by doing that. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna sort this by search volume. So which one actually has the most volume, right? Then we want to go and sort low to high by keyword difficulty. So which of these terms have the most volume but have the lowest amount of difficulty? Now, when it comes to search volume, this is going to be something that you're just going to have to play with. There are some brands that don't want to touch terms that are 50 search volume. That just doesn't make sense to them. Uh, there are some brands that are brand new and 50 searches a month is, is good and it's quite a bit. So depending on your site, depending on your traffic, uh, depends on, on whether or not you're going to go after these. My thought process is, is I will go after some of these terms, especially if they're in groups. 
Um, if it's like only one term that's worth 50 search volume, I probably won't do it. But if there's a bunch of terms within a group that are all around 50 and that group starts to add up to more volume, then it might be something to go with. But right now we've got a, a good idea of intent, the volume, the difficulty. Now that doesn't mean we should just, okay, planning schema, go after that. It's gotta make sense. Like Mardi Gras ad doesn't really make sense for my business. My name right now, I don't, I don't really care that much. Uh, the purpose of this, it's super broad. So now we can start to go through and say, do these terms make sense? Behavior flow in Google Data Studio makes sense. You know, we've got some content on there, maybe something we want to do. The future of search, something we might want to target. Using Google My Business Service updates as semantically related words. Interesting that this query has so much volume. Uh, there's probably a lot more to it than that. So we'll keep it in there for now. But we can go through this list and start looking at it. The other thing we wanna look at is the opportunities we have within the search results. Now, right here we can see which ones have more SERP features or not. And some of these SERP features we have direct access to and other ones we have to do a little bit more work. For image packs, we know that we can add alt text, we can mark up our images. For reviews, we know we can do aggregate reviews. For video, we know that we can embed that, add that, and add schema. Uh, for people also ask, we know that there's more questions that we could potentially answer right within the search results. And for FAQs, we know that we can influence that too. This term up here, planning schema has a ton of opportunity because of all the extra SERP real estate available to us. And I have a hunch that there's a lot more to this term than just planning schema, but it's something that we can start with and, and start looking at. So what I wanna start doing is narrowing this list down by getting rid of anything that just doesn't make sense, right? And then looking at the SERP features. Now, if you wanna count how many SERP features, you can do this using uh, in Excel uh, function, number of features. And I'm gonna link to that, uh, exactly what that is. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste it in here. I'm not an Excel wizard. Again, I, like I've said before in a lot of my videos, I'm just good at copy and paste. So here's the function. We have to make a couple edits because this is looking at cell one and really what we need here is P, uh, P3 because that's the one we're looking at. So we'll go ahead and hit P3, change this to P3. As you can see, there's five additional SERP features that we can target. It's pretty cool because we don't just have the blue link. Theoretically, we could have our blue link. We could have an image pack. We could make our link even more robust by adding reviews. We could show up within a video carousel in the search results or a video block. We could possibly own one of the people also ask and we could extend that review listing with FAQs. So potentially with our blue link, we could have four or more instances of our brand within this search. Uh, result, which is pretty stinking powerful. So now that we have the intent we want to go after, the volume, the last thing you do, like I said, is just going through here and getting rid of all the ones that don't really make sense to your business and then start to organize your plan of action. Now, what do you do to actually earn visibility? Well, you're going to start to look at the pages themselves, right? So we've got all these pages here, as you can see, they're all blog pages. So I can go into these blog pages and I can start to look at what are the pages ahead of me doing? And I can also look at some of these missed opportunities over here. Do I have reviews on this page? Do I have a video on this page? Am I using FAQ on this page? If I'm not, those are quick things that I can do to start earning more visibility. Does my title tag have a good target keyword in it? Am I using it in my meta description? Am I following SEO best practices? But the real big start here is narrowing down this keyword list using our intents, search volume, difficulty, the SERP features available to us, and then we can start to make a list of terms we're gonna target. At the end of the day, you know, we put all of this together, we're talking about potentially thousands of more visits per month just by making these small adjustments. So thanks for checking out this video again today. I hope that it was helpful for you. I hope that you learned something new. If you've got any questions, please comment below. We'd love to continue that conversation with you. And I just wanna remind you, if you don't use SEMrush, and you want to check it out, go ahead and try it for free for 14 days using this link here. Uh, and let me know what you think of it. What tools do you like? What do you not like? What's your favorite SEO tool? Let's just continue this conversation. I appreciate you guys checking this out. Don't forget to like and subscribe it and share it with a friend who might also need some help when it comes to SEO. Until next time, happy marketing.